Hi, this is Phil Hinton. Welcome back to another video here on avforums.tv and a very special episode. We're at the Rafael Theatre here in San Rafael, California, and I'm with Andrew Poole. And Andrew, it's great to see you again. It's good to see you. Now, uh, AV Forums members will know Andrew from our podcast of last December. Uh, wow, if I it's been that correctly. long, yeah. yeah. So here we are, we're sitting in this beautiful Art Deco Theatre, and uh, I guess I've got to ask you, what kind of experience should... Uh, the end user expect if they come to a THX certified screen sure. and what benefits do they get? Well, THX is a mark of quality and consumers know they're going to get an experience that's equitable to the experience a filmmaker had in the production studio. One of the things that we like to say is that the, the, the whole experience is going to be as the director intended, meaning that the image quality and the sound quality, uh, the whole system, if you will, is engineered to preserve the interchangeability of content from the studio to the cinema. And I guess this, you were telling me before, this, this particular cinema was, the, the acoustic engineer was the same engineer that did Skywalker Ranch where they actually mix a lot of these films. Yeah, actually it is. That's a group out of San Francisco and they do a lot of audio video, uh, acoustical design work or acoustic design work for audio video facilities. They've done this facility, they've done Skywalker Ranch and other Lucasfilm facilities and other facilities that cater to the Hollywood industry and the filmmaking industry. One thing we always say to our members who ask questions about how to design their own home theatre, the one thing we always mention first is the room. So in commercial theatre, is it the same thing for, for the THX program? Yeah, well we start a project when a theatre is going to become a THX certified theatre. We actually begin at the beginning. We're looking at the architectural designs for the theater and we go through a process of reviewing the sight lines, the viewing angles, we look at issues like projection distortion based off of where the projector is located and how it interacts with the screen and of course aspects pertaining to the sound system design. For us it's a system-wide approach. You know you could put a great sound system in the room but if the acoustics are terrible it's going to sound terrible. So we put an emphasis on reverberation time for theaters to make sure that the dialogue is going to be intelligible, that adverse reflections from side walls or back wall surfaces don't negatively interfere with the response from the loudspeakers. Then we move forward in terms of providing our detailed technical specifications for the exhibitor. They can build the theater to the THX design spec and the last part of it is we send an engineer to each and every theater to actually go through and perform a full inspection to make sure the theater was built as designed, that all the technical criteria meet our specifications, and that the sound system and the visual system is properly calibrated. So when it comes to specifying a, a THX cinema, um, do you actually specify the equipment that needs to be used as well, or is it more of a performance guideline that that, that equipment must go over? Well, we actually start by pre-qualifying equipment that can be used in a THX theater, and we provide a list of THX approved equipment to an exhibitor. They select which vendors they want to use. So if they want to use one manufacturer as opposed to another manufacturer, then we will work with them using that equipment selection. But then we actually specify how much amplification they need, which models from that manufacturer are appropriate for that given auditorium, and how many surround speakers are needed in that room to provide a uniform um, coverage throughout the seating area. Now, well, we always get this response back when we say uh, that the goal is f as the director intended. So how can you guarantee that I'm getting exactly the same experience that the director wanted me to get? Sure. Well, it really starts from the beginning of THX, if you will, that what we actually started off doing was designing facilities for filmmakers, for studios, and then it branched off into certifying commercial theaters so that that experience was equitable to what was being done in the theater. And throughout all, all of our checks and balances to make sure that theater is built properly, we can actually guarantee that the experience in that commercial theater is the same experience that the filmmakers getting when they're reviewing their content in the studios. Now let's move back to um, the theater environment that, that we're in at the moment. Um, and things are progressing there with digital projection mm -hmm. um, and 3D. So, where do you come from from a, a 3D standpoint? Where do you start looking at standards for, for theatre design? Sure. Well, the one interesting aspect of it is that the standards community for the, the motion picture industry, primarily SEMPTI, has already standardized certain aspects of 3D presentation. But primarily 
in content preparation, not necessarily an exhibition. There's still a lot of questions as to what's the best and most optimal system. So right now what we do is we work with the filmmakers in trying to ensure that the current set of specifications for content being released today and the theaters are playing back the content appropriately. So uh, 3D is five and a half foot lampers uh, at the eye, which means that's through the glasses and with the respective system and you know properly color calibrated and things to that extent. Uh, and in the future, if those specifications are changed by the studios and they have different requirements for how that content's prepared and presented, that will modify our, our requirements so they, they correspond to what the studios are doing. So that's part one of our look at the theatre and home theatre under the THX certification scheme. Come back and see us in part two where we continue our discussions.